Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Aggregate demand is defined as the total demand for all goods and services by all consumers across the aggregate economy. In economics, aggregate means add it all together. So, unlike demand in microeconomics, which analyzes individual consumers in individual markets, aggregate demand in macroeconomics includes all consumers and the real GDP output they demand across the entire economy. In the aggregate economy, consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers can consume domestic goods. And so, aggregate demand is comprised of the goods and services in domestic real GDP that consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers are willing and able to purchase at various price levels. This is the aggregate demand curve. Notice that it is downward sloping, implying that the relationship between aggregate price level and aggregate real GDP output demanded is inverse. This means as prices rise due to inflation in the aggregate economy, consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers are less willing or less able to purchase the same quantity of real GDP output, and therefore they buy less. As prices fall due to deflation in the aggregate economy, consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers are more willing or more able to purchase the same quantity of real GDP output, and therefore they buy more. In microeconomics, the demand curve is downward sloping because the law of demand is in effect. It focuses on the individual consumers and their tendency to buy greater quantities at lower prices, and vice versa. However, aggregate demand involves more than just consumers in the aggregate economy, and so we must consider the factors that affect the purchasing behaviors of firms, government, and foreign consumers as well. And so, in macroeconomics, there are three factors that cause the aggregate demand curve to be downward sloping. The real balances effect, the interest rate effect, and the foreign trade effect. The real balances effect refers to how changes in price level affects the purchasing power of consumers. When prices rise due to inflation, consumer disposable income loses purchasing power, and consumers are either less willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output because it is more expensive, or are unable to buy the same quantity because every dollar they have buys less after inflation. As a result, an increase in price level across the aggregate economy causes a decrease in aggregate real GDP quantity demanded and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point A to point B. When prices fall due to deflation, consumer disposable income gains purchasing power, and consumers are either more willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output because it is less expensive, or are more able to buy the same quantity because every dollar they have to spend buys more after deflation. As a result, a decrease in price level across the aggregate economy causes an increase in aggregate real GDP quantity demanded and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point B to point A. The interest rate effect refers to how changes in interest rates affect the amount of loans that firms take out and therefore the quantity of goods and services they purchase for their own production capabilities. The interest rate is the price of borrowing money. Firms tend to take out large loans in order to reinvest in themselves and purchase land, labor, and capital in order to increase their future productivity and profitability. When interest rates rise, it becomes more expensive to borrow money, and taking out loans has a higher opportunity cost. Firms look to avoid these higher costs in order to maximize their profits. You see, interest rates are tied directly to aggregate price level. When prices rise due to inflation, the demand for money increases as consumers need more money to pay for higher prices. This drives up interest rates, and firms are either less willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output because loans are more expensive, or are unable to buy the same quantity because every dollar they borrow buys less after inflation. As a result, an increase in price level across the aggregate economy causes a decrease in aggregate real GDP output demanded and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point A to point B. When prices fall due to deflation, the demand for money decreases as consumers need less money to pay for goods and services. This drives down interest rates, and firms are either more willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output because loans are less expensive, or are more able to buy the same quantity because every dollar they borrow buys more after deflation. 
As a result, a decrease in price level across the aggregate economy causes an increase in aggregate real GDP quantity demand and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point B to point A. The foreign trade effect refers to how changes in price level affect the quantity of real GDP output that foreign consumers import from our domestic economy. When prices rise due to inflation, our domestic goods become more expensive on the international market. Foreign consumers are either less willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output from us because our exported goods and services are now more expensive, or they are unable to buy the same quantity because every unit of their currency buys less after inflation. As a result, an increase in price level across the aggregate economy causes a decrease in aggregate real GDP output demanded and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point A to point B. When price levels fall due to deflation, the domestic goods that we export become less expensive on the international market. Foreign consumers are either more willing to demand the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output from us because our exported goods and services are cheaper, or they are more able to buy the same quantity because every unit of their currency buys more after deflation. As a result, a decrease in price level across the aggregate economy causes an increase in aggregate real GDP output demand and a movement along the aggregate demand curve from point B to point A. Fundamental changes in economic conditions can cause consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers to demand a lesser or greater quantity of aggregate real GDP output at every price level. This is called a change in aggregate demand, and it is visualized by a shift of the aggregate demand curve. There are four determinants of aggregate demand, consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and net exports. Now you're probably thinking, wait, where have I seen this before? Well, you have. The four components that can cause a change in aggregate demand are the same components that make up a nation's gross domestic product, or GDP. The components of gross domestic product and the four determinants of aggregate demand can both be known by the same acronym, SIGEX. A change in any of these four determinants due to some change in economic conditions will cause a fundamental change in aggregate demand, which will lead to changes in the aggregate economy. A rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve indicates that aggregate demand has increased in the economy, and a greater quantity of real GDP output is being consumed, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation doesn't matter. Consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers are buying more real GDP. A leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve indicates that aggregate demand has decreased in the economy, and a lesser quantity of real GDP output is being consumed, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation doesn't matter. Consumers, firms, government, and foreign consumers are buying less real GDP. Let's take a closer look at aggregate demand. Consumer spending can be affected by a wide array of factors, including income levels, expectations for the future, and consumer tastes and preferences. A change in any of these factors can be a catalyst that causes an increase or decrease in consumer spending, which fundamentally changes aggregate demand and therefore the economy as a whole. For example, suppose that consumers across the United States economy see an increase in their wages, leading to an increase in their disposable income. With more disposable income to spend, consumers will buy greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in consumer spending will cause an increase in aggregate demand across the entire economy. Now suppose that consumers across the United States begin to fear that the economy is entering a recession Fears of high unemployment and economic uncertainty will cause consumers to buy lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This decrease in consumer spending will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the entire economy. Investment spending can be affected by future profit expectations, loan availability, and economic expectations. A change in any of these factors can cause an increase or decrease in investment spending, which fundamentally changes aggregate demand and the entire economy. For example, suppose that firms across the British economy expect their profits to decrease in the near future. In anticipation of lower profits and poor market conditions, British firms will want to protect profits, and so they'll deem it a bad time to take out loans and reinvest themselves by building factories or hiring workers. Instead, they'll buy lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level and scale back production. This decrease in investment spending will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the entire economy. 
Now suppose that banks across Great Britain increase the volume of loans they make available for firms, meaning that those loans are now cheaper as real interest rates fall. Firms will want to take advantage of the lower interest rates because it means they will pay less back to the banks over the life of their loans, allowing them to keep more of their revenues and earn greater profits. As a result, firms take out more loans and buy greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level with those loans. This increase in investment spending will cause an increase in aggregate demand across the entire economy. Government spending is very direct. Federal, state, and local governments that change their spending patterns will cause an increase or decrease in government spending, which fundamentally changes aggregate demand and therefore the economy as a whole. For example, suppose that the South Korean government increases expenditures on military equipment. The South Korean government is acting as a consumer and purchasing greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level in the name of national defense. This increase in government spending will cause an increase in aggregate demand across the entire economy. Now suppose that the United States Congress dedicates itself to closing the budget deficit and cuts spending to national parks and infrastructure projects. The cuts in federal spending may help balance the budget, but it means that Washington is buying fewer quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This decrease in government spending will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the entire economy. Much like consumer spending, net exports can be affected by income levels and consumer tastes and preferences. But it can also be affected by economic conditions, trade policy, and foreign exchange rates between international currencies. A change in any of these factors can be a catalyst that causes an increase or decrease in net export balance, which fundamentally changes aggregate demand and therefore the economy as a whole. For example, suppose that the United States and India are trade partners and disposable income in India increases. With more disposable income to spend, consumers in India will buy greater quantities of real GDP output exported from the United States at every price level. This increase in consumption of exported goods and services from the United States to India will cause an increase in aggregate demand across the United States economy. Now suppose that Canada and Japan are trade partners and the yen appreciates in value, making it stronger in the international market. Canadian goods and services are now less expensive to Japanese consumers because the stronger yen has given them more purchasing power, and they will be able to buy greater quantities of real GDP output exported from Canada at every price level. However, this also means that the Japanese net export balance will move towards a deficit, as Japan is now importing more than it is exporting. As a result, an increase in consumption of exported goods and services from Canada to Japan will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the Japanese economy. Japanese consumers may be buying more, but they're buying foreign real GDP output, not domestic real GDP output. Now suppose that Russia and China are trade partners, and Russia goes into an economic recession. As unemployment increases in Russia, Russian consumers lose their jobs and grow fearful of the future. With less disposable income available and more apprehension about their economy, Russian consumers will buy lesser quantities of real GDP output exported from China at every price level. This decrease in consumption of exported goods and services from Russia to China will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the Chinese economy. And that's aggregate demand. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick micro and macro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my short run aggregate supply video, or you can click here for all my videos on measuring economic performance. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.